Even though it's rejecting me, it apparently still works. Ah. Hello everyone! Welcome to Kerbal Space Program! Do not go again. I don't need to see that. Okay. Let's just start the game. I had to go through a little hoops. I guess I'll go with training for now. Getting started in basic instruction. Yeah, I know basically nothing about the game except vague memories of watching other people play it. Yeah, that's gonna be a big help. Welcome to today's lecture on Vesta Construction. I'm Wern... Wern Herr von Kerman. Whether you want to put a satellite into orbit and make a transcontinental flight or step into the very service of the Mun, you're gonna need to build yourself a ship. It should be pretty easy even if you're not a famous rocket scientist like myself. Tori, I'll show you around the Kerbal Space Center, then take you to the Vehicle Assembly Building where you'll learn how to construct a simple ship. We'll cover adding and removing parts, what the parts do, how to change the performance settings of the parts which have that option, and how to control staging. At the end of the tutorial, you'll have a craft fit for a quick hop from the launch pad. At each step, I will lock out all controls and the ones needed for that step. If you still manage to mess up, it took me, even me sometimes, to become as more skilled as I am now. You press the back button to go back and fix things. It won't light up unless you do mess up. Okay. KSC, for short, is home to the pinnacle of Kerbal Endeavor and achievements for space exploration. Using the facilities you see here, you'll be able to manage your space program, create rockets, and planes, track your Kerbal explorers as they roam the solar system, find exciting new uses for explosive devices, substances, they say devices, and in case of emergency, hire more Kerbals. Find out more about each of these facilities. You can hover your mouse over each of the facility buttons. They show up when the cursor is outside the window. If you need to repair a structure, you can do this by right-clicking them. Take some time to hover the mouse over the buildings to see what they are, and when you're ready, enter the vehicle assembly building. Okay. Awesome. Gotta assemble that sheet. Very good. What you see in the middle of the screen is the construction area. This is where the parts are placed and your craft is constructed. On the left side of the screen is the parts toolbox. It'll show all the parts you have available in each of the different categories. Once there are any to pick, that is. For your craft to be controllable, you must first need a command module. This part will either contain some plucky Kerbal crew or an automated pilot mechanism. As we're just starting, there's only one choice. All right. Wait, what? Um. Huh. Did I accidentally click out of it? To be fair, it was a blinking button, so... I kind of just assumed that was it. Yeah, so much for a back button. I accidentally clicked the back button, didn't I? Right. Okay. This is probably it. Pods. Here we go. After at least one part is placed, you can look around with the following commands. Arrow keys or right mouse drag. Move the camera up and down. Mouse scroll wheel. Shift mouse scroll wheel to zoom the camera in. That is hot. Nicely detailed. If you'd like your pilot to be able to make more than one flight, he or she will have returned safely to the ground or water on Kerbin. Parachutes are a simple way to make sure that happens. They can be found in the utility tab. When you're choosing parts, you can choose the details of available parts by hovering over them in the toolbox. When the info is visible, most parts have an additional information window which can be opened with a right click. Note that the parachute states the effective diameter in each state and what the maximum safe speed deployment is. Go ahead and select the MK-16 parachute by left clicking on it. Then move it to the top of the command pod so the green sphere at the bottom of the parachute lines up with the green sphere at the top of the pad. Click again to, to attach. Cool. Awesome. Some parts like our parachutes here have configurable options. Right click on the parachute. Do that and you will see the available parameters on the parachute. We will see that we can adjust our altitude and the atmospheric pressure at which to open. That setting can be quite useful on distant worlds. For now, let's check the opening height on the chute is at least 1,000 meters. Because safety is the Kerbal way after all. For the minimum pressure slider, move it a bit to the right to 0.2. Okay. It's the right. Oh, okay. It's 0 0.04. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. 
Okay, this setting prevents the chute from opening until the atmospheric pressure is above the confirmed value. Uncurable 0.2 is about 9 kilometers in altitude, so even if you stage early and arm the parachute, it will wait until then to activate. You can hide these options by right-clicking on the background scene or picking another uh, part. If you're happy with that, we can proceed. Next up, we're going to need something to make us go. Click on the engines tab on the left to show the available engines and solid rocket motors. Grab one and connect it to the bottom of the pod. You may need to zoom or move the camera to be able to do so. Who knows? I have no idea what I'm doing. I'd probably kill us all. There we go. Oops, I forgot you're just starting out. You're not a famous rocket scientist. To make that craft survivable as it stands now, you'd have to be a better you'd have to be better at rocket science than me. Ha, huh? impossible. The problem with that craft is that this small rocket is too powerful for the payload. It'll either burn up on ascent from going too fast, or burn up coming back down. Even if you survive that, the craft's met. Mass will cause it to fall too fast with the parachute to operate properly and you'd hit the surface before it could stop you. Yeah, I promise to teach you how to change that to make it work in a later tutorial, but for now, let's continue. Well, at least this way I get to teach you about removing parts. Pick up the BACC thumper and either drop it back over the parts toolbox or press delete. Very well. How dare you. Instead, let's add a solid motor that's a better ma match for a ship of this size. At the start of your career, you'll have what I consider rubbish parts. Literally, the motor here looks like it may as well be a converted trash can. That said, it does have enough oomph to get this little crab moving skyward and quickly. As you progress, you will be able to unlock more engines and other parts. For now, though, just pick up the RT-5 flea and connect it to the bottom of the pod. The trash that's got fleas coming out of it. Nice one. You build the simplest survival crab possible. We can go launch this right now, but it might be safer to explain one other, one other thing first. Bottom right, you will see the staging stack. Box with the number zero and icons for the parachute and engine in it. The stack shows us which parts will be activated as we stage our rocket. Well, this shows that we activate the next stage, but the engine and the parachute will be triggered. While well, it could be considered funny to open the chute and fire the motor at the same time, it's not going to give you much of a flight. To fix this, we're going to separate the engine and shoot into two stages. If you mess over the zero stage, you'll see a little plus and minus appear to the left of the box. Click the plus to add a new stage. If you had too many, click the minus button on the extra ones to remove them. Make sure you have precisely two stages. Cool. Excellent. It's important to note that the stages activate from the highest number, then count down. Our first stage will be one, and then our second will be the chute. I drag the engine icon from zero, stage zero down to stage one to give our pilot some comfort. That's it. We now have a safe, well, relatively safe craft that's ready to go. Make sure that if we need this design again, we don't have to build it all from scratch. At the top of the screen, you will see a name for our craft. Hmm, untitled spacecraft. Doesn't seem too majestic. Why don't you change that to something more your style, and you can add a description if you'd like. When you use the loading screens later, these names and descriptions help you to grab the right vessel. When you're happy with the name, click on the save in the upper right corner. Okay then. What shall we call this craft? The... Radiant Hornet. Bingo. Excellent work. Feel free to play around with the parts and techniques I've shown you, and when you're ready to continue, press the red button in the upper right to exit. Back at the training menu, try the Flight Basics tutorial to learn how to fly this little craft, and then the Intermediate Instruction tutorial can teach you more about the editor. Any vessels you create here will be lost when you exit. This is just for playing around. Okay. Real shame. Go for basic flight then. Just so I can crash the more efficiently. Welcome to the Kerbal Space Center launch facility. I'm Gene Kerman and I will teach you the basics of piloting a spacecraft. I trust you've already checked the basic construction tutorial. If not, I recommend you do so before going through this one. Today we will do a run through of all the important controls for our spacecraft. A little hopper from our basic construction lesson with Herner may not have all of them, but we'll do a full run through once and see how it flies. When you're ready to go, press next. Flying a spacecraft is all about being in control of a generally very chaotic situation. As a pilot, your main flight controls will affect your pitch, yaw, and roll of your ship. Let's look at these first. All the other controls will be locked until they're needed or the tutorial is closed. Pitch, yaw, and roll are the three directions you will need to rotate your craft. To help you visualize these, we're taking a holiday snap of the hopper below. Next up, we'll see how to rotate in these directions. You control your ship's rotation with the f these following keys. 
A and D is to yaw left and right, and then S and W is to pitch up and down, and Q and E is to roll left and right. Wow, it's almost like it's using WASD with Q and E for good measure. They can truly pitch, yaw, and roll together. You can keep the ship in a controlled flight. Right now, and notice the indicator on the le lower left side move as you put control input. Indeed. Throttle plus pitch, yaw, and roll are the main controls you'll need to master for a successful crash-free flight. We'll skip over the throttle control for now as this visual vessel has no need for it. Don't worry, I'll explain another time when it's of use. Remember that all these controls have a limited amount of effectiveness, so bigger, heavier ships will probably respond much more sluggishly to the controls than a little small one. It's also good to keep in mind that as stages are separated from the ship, it'll become lighter and this will usually mean easier to control. Next, let's look at the rest of the flight controls. In flight, all the planning you put in the staging sequence of your ship comes into play. From launch to the final deployment of the descent parachutes, you can control the activation of several of the ship's parts by activating launch stages. Okay, notice the stage indicator in the lower left. It shows the currently active stage. Seems we haven't launched yet. It's showing the first stage is active. I have your staging controls locked for now, so the staging indicator is glowing purple. One more thing on staging. If the staging setup is kind of using strife or you change your mind about something, you can edit the stage sequence on the fly, pun intended. No need to go back to your assembly facility. An important part of flying is knowing how your ship is orientated and where it's going. That's why a good pilot is always aware of the ship's altitude, where it's pointing, and its velocity vector, where it's going. These aren't always the same direction, and as your skills improve, you should pick up on these. The big round instrument on the lower center of the screen is called the nav ball. Cool. This device sums up most of the critical information needed for a proper, death-free flight. Here you can see the ship's nose in relation to the hor horizon. When you're not pointing straight up, it's as easily visible as the line between blue sky and the brand ground, as well as its heading, compass bearing, and speed. You can also get several icons that indicate things like your current velocity vector, but we'll have a look at those later. In the top center part of the screen, you have your altimeter, vertical speed indicator, and atmosphere gauges. The altimeter will show you the distance of the planet's surface at sea level. This means the actual surface may be much closer, so watch out for the ground when landing. Your vertical speed indicator shows how quickly your altitude is changing. When launching, it's considered best to keep this gauge pointed up. The atmosphere gauge indicates how deep the ship is in the planet's atmosphere. This will help you know if the ship is high enough for orbiting without losing speed to air resistance or judging how effective wings and control surfaces will be. One last thing before we give this rocket the green light. The staging stage, staging stack, you can see the indicator for your parachute. The indicator shows when the chute will be activated by staging. You already know that, but the background will also change color to indicate when, the, when it is safe to stage the parachute, and the foreground will change color depending on the parachute state. Note, however, that by default, parachutes will not deploy when unsafe even if you stage them. The left three show safety. Safety, risky, and unsafe to deploy. The chute is unstaged in the left three. The right three shows stage state after staging. Arm deployed and cut slash shredded. When you're familiar with the chute icon colors, we can move on. Okay, enough talk. I'll unlock the, lock the flight controls and you'll be clear to launch. At any time, you may press escape to pause the game. In the pause menu, you can restart the flight or end the tutorial. For now, you're... For now, get yourself prepared and press space when ready to launch. Don't forget our Harper is only one solid motor, so there is no throttle control. That's why we didn't review the throttle here. Make sure you fly on a nice high arc and enjoy the flight. Okay. I will go ahead and do all that. And up you go. You can try practicing some of the controls like pitch, yaw, and roll. Also, keep an eye on the parachute icon on the staging list that shows you how safe the current environment is for shoots. Anyways, I'll hang around and watch, and I'll let you know when it's safe to stage your shot. Shoot. Okay. Okay. And now we sit back and enjoy the descent. Um, sure. Why not? Look at me, so majestic. Isn't that just super? Let's zoom out so we can see all the parachute. Kind of funny how now this is zooming in and out. How do I pitch? Ah, uh, that's probably it. Seems like you have to hold down the mouse, middle mouse button. There we go, that's better. 
Let's just topple right into the ocean. Hope you like a swim. Well, at least the parachute deployed fine. <laughs> you know, it's close enough to the ground that I could just make the parachute fall, like detach it, and it would just be a bit of a rough landing. But this is a tutorial, which means I can't really do that. Probably. Valentina Kerman. A pretty good pilot. Colonel View. Oh, cool. Nice. Hey, oh, you're a curious one, aren't you? You see the ship from his perspective. Not that in this mode your flight UI has less instructions since most of them can be found in the cockpit, cockpit itself. Okay. Well done, you've survived your first quick flight. When you've landed a splash on Kerbin and not in training, you can point the mouse just above the altimeter and click the recover button and ask to be picked up. I've also unlocked the crew hatch, so if you feel like going out for a walk or swim, you can press the EVA button that will pop up when you mouse over the portrait of the Kerbal if you want to go for a walk. You just do it for fun or to collect a surface sample. This concludes today's lesson. To exit training, you simply press escape. Okay, see ya. Let me go for EVA. Let's go exploring this strange new world. Let go. <laughs> this is great. How do I go from the pilot's point of view? As in first person. Is it even possible? I think it'd be cooler if... Okay, well it's probably as close as I'm going to get to the pilot. Not too shabby. I'm swimming! Because, you know, why not? You can find your way back, can't you? Lucky you know how to swim. Otherwise, this would be awkward. Wow, um, this might be a, wa a little ways off. Yeah, you're probably doomed. But I'm gonna go now. In scenario. You know what? I've probably learned enough. Let's go for... Uh, play ESA missions about making history expansion. Uh, let's start new. Go for Sandbox. General Chaos. Difficulty options. Okay, e let's go for easy. Because why not? You're free to play without any constraints, but R&D and mission control are unavailable. Very well, then. I'm gonna go completely balls to the wall on this. The game's been telling me how to properly do it. And now I'm going to just do things my way. You got a problem with that, Wiggy? But I thought... Let's see what looks the craziest. Looks like a strip of film for some reason. Let's go with this. Got it. <laughs> that just looks weird. Anyway. Engines. Go for a nice big one. Yeah, a nice big one. Oh, now that's what I'm talking about. That's the one with that's something with a little elbow grease on it. Yeah, yeah. Fuel tanks, pods, coupling. Oh yeah, utility. Did mention that. Mining excavator. Go for this. Yeah, I'll definitely need a parachute and some fuel tanks. You know, why not? Oh, that's small. Need something big. Need some chunky boys on this. Come on, give us some chunky boys. Or not. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> Darn it. That would make it way too into the ground. You know what? Screw it. Let's go for that. <laughs> that looks silly. It looks silly, but whatever. My ship, damn it. Man of control. 
a wheel module? What even is that? Sure. Let's just go for that because it looks cooler. Clearly everything that looks cool is practical. Probably. I'm going to assume. Very nice. <laughs> oh, that's great. This is probably going to be a complete disaster. I guarantee it. Right, okay. This ought to be good enough. Around. Now, let's just slap some wheels on it. Because, you know, why not? That'll definitely help. Yeah, don't you know that? That'll definitely help. <laughs> Coupling. Structural. Multi-point connector. Again, it just looks cool. Pretty sure it's not going to help. It's going to make everything so much worse. USS Disaster. Disaster of the making, everybody. Let's launch this. Because why not? I'm crazy enough to. Let's do this thing. Three, two, one, blast off! Wow, okay. It is immediately turning in on itself and hitting the ground. I think it might be a little top heavy. Just a bit. Alright, we had some issues to iron out. Revert to launch, I guess. Let's do that again. This time, we'll try deploying the parachute immediately. See if that does any difference. Let's just deploy the parachute. Watch it meekly try to save anything. Spoiler alert, it didn't save a damn thing. Wow. Ah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful right there. Just mwah. Chef's kiss. Actually, let's see. Revert to launch again. Actually curious about something. Okay, so the sides the wheels are on is the side that it falls in on. So clearly what I need is more stuff here, and then it'll not turn quite so quickly. Clearly what we need is more weight on one side. That'll make things balance out, I think. The vehicle assembly. Time to dump even more unnecessary crap onto this thing. Communications. Sure, why not? Everyone needs a relay communication. Science. Yes, yeah, for science. What not? Cargo, why not? Inner module. Pop that there. Engines. Fuel tanks. Pods. Structural. Fuse lodge. Stability enhancer. So let's go with that. Let's just go with that. <laughs> That'll help. It says stability enhancer. Must be good. Or something. Girder segment. That's not big enough. Come on, we need something bigger. We need something massive. Tiny. Gotta be ashamed of yourself. Give me something big. Or not at all. Okay. Huh. 
Hold up a second. Yeah, that works. Why not? The important thing is to put as much weight as we possibly can on this side. Because my logic is dictating that if we put more stuff on this side, it'll become heavier on that side and thus become more stable. Yes, that is my brilliance at work. Parachute. Mount, radial mount parachute. Sure, why not? Not for any particular reason. Mobility enhancer. Sure. I need to climb up to that. I don't know, maybe. Aerodynamics? Sure, why not? Let's give it giant wings. That way it'll look more like a proper shuttle. Too bad it won't fly like one. Oops. Hold up. Yeah, I think that was the one I went with. Hope this one's even bigger. Oh wait, it's the same thing. Okay, let's let's try launching it now. <laughs> Just for the hell of it. Let's see if I can make something insane enough to actually work. Probably not. Three, two, one. Yeah, this this still isn't working. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, it still didn't quite stop it from completely hitting the ground. Weird. I just don't understand. What am I doing wrong? Who try everything? Maybe I just need more fins. Small nose cone? You know what? How about a big nose cone? Okay then. Why not? Go for little wings on the back of it. Just because. If we're gonna make this crash. We may as well make it look as unnecessarily complex while we do it. If you're gonna fail, you may as well fail spectacularly. That's how you do it. Science. Yeah, we can scan the area as we're crashing into it. Have a scanning module. Sure, why not? Let's launch it. I'm sure this hunk of junk isn't going to crash on re-entry immediately. I am... whole percent sure. <laughs> Even the parachutes don't help. Woohoo! We did it! I mean... Oh no! What have I done? This is silly. This is silly. I'm silly. What else looks cool? Small hard point? No. We're not going for small, we're going for big, baby. The bigger the better. Tail connector? What? Hold up. Hmm. How do I not select any of the- okay. Oh, cool. That works, I guess. What's the conflict? Does not make any sense. I don't understand. What's the problem? Why is it rejecting me? Rejecting me somehow. Oh, probably because of this. Yeah, that would make sense. Except it doesn't. 
Darn it, it's refusing to do anything. Go for the USS Disaster again. <laughs> this is great. Bet I can't select all of it. Plus, that's how you do it. Huh. Wow. It's the music used for Mr. Incredible becomes uncanny. Kind of funny about that. Okay, whatever you say. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> Launch. Even though it's rejecting me, it apparently still works. However, I am going to have to say that is it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. What the? Make sure to spread this video around like a lack of a launch because apparently that's the only thing that's left. And I will see you next time. Now go out there and capitalize on life. Peace out, have a good one. Have a nice and very pleasant day. Well, at least nobody died. I'd consider that a success. See you later. If you like what you saw, you can find more of that in these videos right here. If you're a real junkie for video games like I am, then subscribe and hit that bell icon if you haven't already to get your next fix, and a like and a comment are always appreciated too.